How's it going folks? Rob from Bits Out the Back here doing a little bit of an update on a project I've been working on to do with the aquaponics. Um, we're in winter down here in southeast Queensland, Australia, so I thought I'd just try and build a bit of a compost hot water heater uh, to try and raise the level or the temperature in the um, aquaponics system. I've been posting pictures to Instagram and Facebook and I've had a load of questions and PMs and emails, so uh, what I thought I'd do is just give you a quick look and I'll do a more complete clip at a later date once I've worked out a few of those bugs. Uh, also too, I'll give you a bit of a quick look at the new bed and the rest of the um, patch as well with the aquaponics and yeah, just a bit of a quick roundup. But for now, we'll head up to the compost. So this is the compost hot water system. It's just basically my old compost cage with a heat exchanger in the centre. Uh, the heat exchanger is pretty much all an idea I got from Chris. I'll put a link to his clip just up in here. Um, it's basically just uh, six pegs in the ground with 45 metres of one inch or 25 mil irrigation line just wound between the pegs. Um, so I've got an inlet at the top and an outlet at the bottom. Both of these can be swapped around if need be. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the, the compost itself is I've used my layer technique uh, that I've used in other compost uh, cages which I think is pretty much all part of the downfall of this system why it's not working too well. I have layers of tree mulch, then horse manure, then loosened hay, then some veggie scraps, coffee scraps and then I've repeated the layers all the way up and I've activated the pile with some fish scraps in the centre of the heat exchanger. Uh, so I think one of the problems is the, the material isn't mixed enough. Um, if the heat exchanger wasn't there and it was just my normal compost cage, not a problem. I think I would be getting a lot of heat generated in the system. It's just not happening, unfortunately. I think one of the best things I could have done is scrapped the whole um, IBC cage idea and made a si system similar to Chris. Just used a round circle of wire, um, filled that up with the compost, making sure I mixed it really well and have the roughly the same size heat exchanger in the centre, maybe with a few more gaps between the different runs of pipe and I think I would have ended up with a much better heater. As it stands in the centre I'm only getting temperatures between 45 and 55 degrees, it fluctuates up and down so I think the not only because the materials aren't mixed in but also having the, the heat exchanger segregate it and basically turn it into two separate composting areas um, that's why it's not heating up very well. It's just starting to rain so I'll try and wrap this up quickly. Um, one of the things people have mentioned in messages to me um, is I really should have the water coming in the base running up and then out the top down to the sump tank. As it is I have the water coming through this one inch line there's a valve there that regulates the flow it's flowing down through the top of the heat exchanger out the base through a half inch or a um, 13 mil uh, insulated irrigation line to the sump tank. Now heat rises so yeah it basically would have been a great idea to have it plumbed in from the bottom and then up the top and then out again. The problem is I'm using the same pump that is running the fish tank and the grow beds so if I was to do that I think I would be robbing far too much flow rate from the other parts of the system so I've gone with this um, this way of plumbing just for the time being. Later on I may change it around but yeah just for now this is the way it's set up. I've got to buy more hope and bits and pieces like that and money doesn't grow on trees. As you can probably make out by the position of the valve there's not a lot of water actually flowing through there at the moment. The reason is because the compost isn't cooking that well um, if I had a lot of cold water running through there I'd rob even more heat out of there the bacteria wouldn't like it and yeah I'd basically be shooting myself in the foot so um, I've got it down to a trickle at the moment I'm getting fairly good temperature rise out of a trickle but yeah it's definitely not optimal like I said before. What I'll do is I'll take you down and show the temperature of the water in the system versus the temperature of the water coming out from this pipe down here. So we'll just whack the pen in here. What temperature have we got? Oh, it's a little bit warm, 20 degrees. So we're sitting at around about 18.8. .8. So we'll pop around to the sump tank and we'll pop the thermometer in there and see what sort of a temperature we're looking at. So this is the line, the half inch or 13 mil insulated line that's coming through and just up and then down into the sump tank. There's a bit of hose here that's actually sitting down below the water level and that's what's delivering the water down there. It's exposed to the elements just at the end but I don't think you know it's enough to drop the temperature too much. So that's pretty much all how it's set up. Um, I've just got my little jar and pH pen down here so we'll set up the camera and have a bit of a look. So we'll just pop this hose in. I'll show you the flow rate actually. 
It's not, like I said before, it's not a great flow rate. We're not getting, you know, a large amount of water through the system, but it's, it's enough to slow it down so it does actually warm up in the heat exchanger. Just pop my pen in. And we're sitting at, we're climbing slowly. It was 20.8 last time I checked. See how far it's gonna go. 29. So yeah, we're only a couple of degrees warmer than the um, water that's in the radial flow filter after it's come through the fish tank. So yeah, not a perfect hot water system. And like I said, you know, it's, I've made a couple of mistakes along the way. I really do think using Chris's method of um, a round wire cage would work a lot better. And I'm actually contemplating pulling the whole thing down, rebuilding it, mixing the materials better and making it up like he has. So we'll just wait and see. Um, it's all a learning curve for me. This is only the first serious attempt that I've had at compost hot water system. So so we'll just see how we go. So we'll head up now and have a look at the fish before we have a look at the grow beds. So we'll toss a couple of pellets in for these silvers, see if they want a bit of a snack. They've already been fed this morning. These guys here, they've pretty much all been on the feed all through winter. Pretty happy with the way they're going. They've put on a surprising amount of size. I think we might actually grow a few more silvers depending on what they taste like. Haven't had any yet. So we'll just wait and see come harvest time. We'll pop over and have a look at the jades. So these jades are being fairly active over the last couple of days. So I'll throw a few more pellets in for them. These guys come from Western Queensland, which is a warmer climate. Uh, they really do like water temperature above 20 degrees. They really do best in warmer water. From what I've been told and read online, these guys can handle water temperature anywhere from around about 18 degrees Celsius all the way up to 31, 32-ish. Down around about 18 and below, they stop metabolizing food as well as they normally would. Around about 16 degrees, I stop feeding them all together. I mean, uh, if it's over a three or four day period, I might toss a little bit of food in but the water temperatures generally bounce back after two or three days here. I have had the water go down in the old system as low as 12 degrees and I didn't lose any fish, but they do suggest that you do keep your water temperature above 14 degrees for the jade perch, um, otherwise you will start to lose some. So they seem to be handling the winter weather fairly well at the moment. I was hoping that the, the heater would bring the temps up to around about 22 degrees or over to keep them really hitting the food hard, but you know, such is. Uh, the silvers, their, their range, I forgot to mention before, is around about 12 degrees to 27 degrees so um, they're, they're definitely right in their element at the moment and feeding rather well like I said before so anyway we'll stop talking fish and pop down and have a look at the grow beds so this first bed looks to be going all right I'm pretty happy with the progress of the snap peas up the back and also the wongbok cabbage in the middle I ended up planting a few more um, beetroot just around the outside pretty stoked with them. Over here you can see the bed on top of the sump tank is absolutely chockers with Okinawan spinach. We've had loads of that stuff uh, in salads and stir fries and curries and all sorts of things. It, it's almost like we can't keep up with it. It's growing that well even through winter so a couple of those plants will definitely be coming out of there at some point. The one plant I have taken out of here was the big broad ripple yellow currant that was growing right up to the top. It was just getting too bushy and cutting out a lot of light from the plants behind there. Uh, you can see the, the dwarf uh, mulberry is still in there as well, I haven't pulled him out. In this next bed, I've taken out one of the collards, basically because we don't really fancy them, to tell you the truth. I know a lot of people like them. We have been using this plant and a couple of the others in the soil beds, using them uh, as chook fodder. The chooks absolutely go off on it. That's the chickens, for you guys who don't know. Uh, the chickens absolutely go off on these leaves, so I'm more than happy to, you know, use them as a bit of chicken fodder around the place. In the base of this bed, we still have uh, the rice paddy herb. It's going so-so. It looks like it doesn't really like the cold too much. Over here, the kangkong is all but died off. I think there's maybe one or two green stems still alive in there. And we have a whole heap of little lettuce seedlings. I was hoping to set up a um, NFT system just here, a very small one at the end of this bed, using grow grips, but it's just one of those jobs I haven't gotten around to doing yet. Um, the other plants in this bed well, are the celery just on the end here and we also have a tomato. We'll pop around the corner to have a look at him. Just behind the celery is one of the summertime gold tomatoes I started off as a cutting. Uh, now it's not doing that crush hot at the moment because we had a whole heap of tomato blight come through here. 
I'll just give you a look at the parent plant. A lot of the leaves were taken off. They just got absolutely smashed. I removed as many infected leaves as I could and also gave the, it gave the plant, all the plants in the system actually, a bicarbonate soda spray or baking soda spray. Um, it works as a homemade fungicide and pretty much all kills fungus by raising the pH on the, the leaves themselves and just prevents the spores from growing further. Now I did lose a fair bit of fruit. Um, a lot of the flower heads just fell off but I have noticed that it has, is starting to bounce back again. I've got a couple of flowers forming in there that look like they may stick but I've also noticed I'm getting a few more leaves that look like they're affected by blight. So it's time to spray this guy again and also nip off any of those infected leaves. The rest of the summertime gold though is yeah still producing fruit. We nipped off three more this morning. They actually started to split a little bit too wide and some of them have a little bit of mold on them but it's still edible just cut them off. There's also a fair few fruit just up in there. I think there's four or five fruit to come off. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fruit to come off in there so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, one of the best dwarf tomatoes we've grown. We've got the Werricanawis in the soil. I still think these guys, the summertime golds, are a little bit sweeter. The other plants in this bed are doing all right. We've got the thyme just down the bottom there on the corner. And we have the red vein sorrel in this corner here. It's still producing really well. We've hacked it back a couple of times for salads. And the chickens have had a little bit here and there. And it just keeps bouncing back over and over. Really impressed with that. Up and behind there we have the parsley, the flat leaf parsley, that's just been hammered. Um, the girls really don't want any more couscous salads or quinoa salads at the moment. They're just totally over the parsley. Uh, another celery there. This celery is, the stems are a little bit flimsy. They're not as um, tight and as hard as the last lot of celery we grew in the aquaponics. So I don't know if that's just a weather thing. So we're going to leave those plants, just continually harvest the stems over. We've been putting it in stir fries and curries and that sort of thing. Around the back here, Still harvesting a couple of carrots. These guys aren't that big. The first few along here were a nice decent size. I don't know whether it's because it's starting to cool down or not. These guys here are only a little bit fatter than my finger so they're all right for salads but they're not you know really much chop for a main meal sort of carrot. Um, I, like I said I think it could be just be the cold and the weather at the moment just dwarfing them a bit but there's, a, there's enough there in that row runs all the way down the bed and across the back that we can pull out a fair few just to bulk up a salad if need be. The basil here, it looks like it's being finally affected by the cold. I came down the other night and snipped off a few more for a bit of a warm salad. Over the back in there, the turmeric is pretty much well ready to pull out. Um, it's not a very big plant, so I'm not expecting a massive yield from that. And above that there we have the Bundaberg Rumble Tomatoes, um, absolutely loaded with fruit. Over there in that cluster there's got to be well over 10. This cluster here there's about 10. Um, there's a fair few over here, there's a couple of different clusters here. Just to give you some idea of the size of these guys. Not a massive tomato but they're a great salad one. Um, of what I've been doing with them is dicing them up and adding them to salads that way. Or dicing them up and grilling them on toast um, with a bit of cheese. Uh, not the sweetest tomato, but they do have a really nice flavour, so something we will be growing again. I mean, just look at the amount of fruit from this one plant, absolutely loads on there, and we still have more flower buds forming, so really impressed with the rum balls. We'll just battle this tomato now, and I'll give you a bit of a look at the ginger. The ginger has actually started to die off a bit. You can see it's starting to yellow. Uh, it's not completely dead, so I think I've got a week or two before I can get in there. Probably could harvest it now, it wouldn't hurt. But I definitely think I'm going to get a decent amount from these two barrels. I have a stand in another bed that I really should have harvested today, but we had a couple of rain showers. So um, this lot here will be next after I tackle the stuff in the soil bed with the turmeric that's in there. So there you go, there's a little bit of a look at the compost hot water system for you folks who are interested. I mean, as you can see, a two, per, a two degree lift in temperature, um, it's really nothing that fantastic and it's only coming through at a trickle. So the compost is heating up, but it's not heating up to the point where I can produce enough water to boost the temperature in the system. Um, it was never the plan from the get-go that we could produce enough hot water out here for to have showers and that sort of thing. I think the neighbours might get a little bit concerned if we did that. Uh, it was only ever to bump the water in the system a couple of degrees. I will also add a couple of links in the description to below to Jean Payne and also Darren Doherty's clip and Chris 
Thank you very much, sir. Uh, to their sites and links and bits and pieces. Uh, Jean Payne, he is the gentleman who popularised the idea in the 1970s. He used um, compost hot water systems to boost the temperature of water for domestic use in kitchens and bathing and that sort of thing. And he also used the, the heat, uh, like Chris did in his clip, to heat a dwelling. I think it's a fantastic idea if you're into alternate energy and in a cooler climate. This might be something that might pique your interest and send you off on a new direction. As for the plants in the system, well, you saw the tomatoes and the Okinawan spinach, they're just thriving at the moment. Uh, I did notice on the Wombok though, a couple are going to seed, uh, little flower heads are forming, so I've got to nip them off. Might throw them in our lion's head soup for when Bianca gets back from her work trip. Um, but yeah, if you are a new viewer, this is the first one of our clips you've seen, uh, feel free to subscribe. We obviously do clips on aquaponics, uh, aquaculture. Uh, every now and then we post a clip on our chickens or the compost worms and we also grow in wicking beds or sub-irrigated planters I think some people call them. Um, just a small little urban farm we're trying to set up here. A lot of uh, renovations going to be going on so if you subscribe every time we post a clip you'll get a little notification in your email box and you can come along and see what's going on. Um, but yeah I will leave it there. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Other than that thank you very much for coming along. Hope everyone is well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks!